गुड मॉर्निंग वेलकम टू द मॉर्निंग सेशन सभी को नमस्ते गुड मॉर्निंग एंड वेलकम वी आर डूइंग यू एच वी थ्री एंड इन यू एच वी थ्री वी वर ऑन लेक्चर ट्वेंटी थ्री वी वर टॉकिंग अबाउट द ह्यूमन गोल वॉट टू डू वॉट नॉट टू डू एज अमन is a recap of what we have already what we may be familiar with through the second level ftp about human goal as an individual in every individual having right understanding and right feeling and right thought which leads to happiness in every individual having prosperity in every family so that every family has is able to produce and be prosperous when there is right understanding in every individual and prosperity in every family then there is fearlessness in the society there is trust in the society because then nobody needs to snatch from another everybody has enough and ultimately with nature and existence living in coexistence so that we don't exploit the nature rather we enrich as we go along so when we don't understand these goals and we go by certain assumptions like for instance that money is everything so we need to accumulate or that there is not enough for everybody so i have to fight struggle or that let me take enough more than enough but then if i don't have the understanding of how much is enough i may be exploiting people dominating over people creating fear in the society and of course with the problems in nature so um yesterday as assignment we had just um given this uh something to reflect on that any problems that we see at any level be it at the individual level at the family level at the societal level or at the level of nature they are nothing but absence of fulfillment of some part of the human goal can we see that and if we ensure the fulfillment of these human goals then does it seem possible that we will also get rid of the problems we are facing today so what we'll do is we need to move forward also so probably we'll take just one or two observations and then we'll move ahead and particularly if there's a question uh we can address the question first <laughs> you can raise your hand if there is any observation or question just one or two we'll take and then we'll move ahead with the content so a lot of content is there good morning namaste didi namaste all namaste my question is to how we can understand and uh, reflect it in our behavior in our activities understanding that we have enough and all have enough so that there is no competition and there is a mutual fulfillment and we we can get peace or uh, happiness so can you reflect some some yeah so if you see this is what we are working for isn't it if yeah. all of us have this understanding and we can get this understanding to everybody Uh, at least make it available um people will have some different perspective to look at at least you know right now the way society is going it seems 
because of whatever societal pressure you know everybody seems to be in that competitive mode children are you know getting tense about exams because they feel they have to do the best and there is a lot of pressure from parents from teachers so if you see from any angle even for people who are you know beyond the student level as adults as um people who are earning a livelihood if we have this wrong assumption that for instance that there is not enough for everybody so i have to grab take my share then you can see this difference no yes how the perspective becomes different and then we just keep going by that and then in society it gets propagated multifold through media through you know other people through so many things because today it is very easy to um transfer information from one to the other through all this you know um technology but we can also put this technology to the right use just as it can spread the wrong messages very quickly it can also spread the right messages very quickly so when we first started this you know thanks to covid i mean covid was not something pleasant but one of the good things that happened then was that we looked at this um online mode which we had not thought about earlier which we had not really investigated into and we found that it is quite effective we thought we were skeptical that you know in the beginning that um whether people will really be able to will it, will it have the same impact like a face to face workshop and we found that people are actually able to reflect because with this kind of facility like zoom it's almost that you are all sitting we are all sitting in one classroom and talking so um this facility and it can be multiplied many fold so in the workshops we can have up to 1000 people at a time if you had to do face to face workshops for this many people it would take lot of resources lot of effort lot of time but now with so many people in the same sessions we can reach many more similarly now the program that is being done for teachers so the teachers can then spread it to more and more students isn't it so every um educational facility if this could be there then at least for the youth and the upcoming youth this becomes a very viable possibility isn't it yes and it can come in society also but again it has to start from the individual so if i can identify my goals if i can see how i get happiness and prosperity with the right understanding that my needs are satisfied from within not from outside of course there is need for the body but then those are limited i don't have to fight struggle hoard accumulate exploit for that isn't it when i see that and i can be prosperous with the little effort then i can see this possibility for others also and slowly as the you know trend changes as more and more people are um this is made available to more and more people then there will come a tipping point in society where you know um right now what is the majority may then become the minority and what we are talking about that may predominate so that's what we are all working for yes yes 
नमस्कार मैडम नमस्कार टू ऑल सो मैडम आर एबल टू हियर मी यस यस थैंक यू uh so as a part of your assignment you asked us to observe the problems uh, so let us take the individual problem uh, many people say uh, have not settled well that's why i, I won't very ma- marry soon uh, like bachelors what they say and uh, the married people also if you if we ask uh, no proper settlement uh, money is not sufficient uh, at the individual level and the uh, society level also uh, family level also Uh, that family is good. Uh, they, uh, they are acquiring more wealth uh, like that. Uh, society level, uh, village level. So let us take village. We don't have our problems are not addressed by the people, the representatives mm-hmm. like that. What I have understood, uh, you have asked us in the assignment are nothing but the absence of fulfillment of uh, 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 some part of our human goal. Yes, really, because. Uh, if you take the individuals uh, side uh, there is a misunderstanding that money is everything that is the reason why he is unhappy suppose if i acquire money then uh, i think i am settled uh, suppose if i get good salary with uh, i am a good job with good salary so like that if we observe all these problems are uh, due to the lack of uh, uh, proper understanding or the absence of fulfillment of some part of the human goal so uh, the the uh, lacking clarity about the human goal mm-hmm. so he he is seeking for happiness all seek for happiness but where it lies uh, people are uh, uh, confusing what i feel so that's yeah. why if you ensure the fulfillment of these goals definitely it seems uh, feasible yeah. suppose let us uh, yeah definitely let us take an individual also suppose if we ask him what you really want are you really uh, getting from the things what, what you point? want yeah really so please in every individual <laughs> if we can work for the right understanding at least to make the information at least at the level of information if it is available then yeah, everybody yeah. can have this opportunity this really one. madam yes true that's my reflection thank you thank you yes we can go to the next slide yeah so if we look at you know our goals one another way of looking at it is if something is leading to our unhappiness if the absence of something is leading to our unhappiness then we can see it might be our real goal otherwise it is not so for instance when there is absence of understanding yeah and we have some assumption then ultimately we end up with you know unhappiness because we are not able to feel fulfilled so if we look at it like this you can see this is another way of looking at it that the absence of something is leading to unhappiness next slide so this is just a recap of what we were saying earlier that we want to live and live you know not just live because if we are just living what we call surviving then that is not enough for a human being we want to live with fulfillment and physical facility you know we can see that it doesn't give that fulfillment we need something more so we also need fulfillment in relationship of course physical facility is important but we must know how much we require also isn't it and be able to ensure that much that is required and have good relationships but we are not just living 
wanting to live with fulfillment, we want to live with continuous fulfillment. So this has been referred to by different names, different words in tradition also. And we also talked of, you know, the words like happiness, satisfaction, peace, bliss, fulfillment, um, salvation, liberation, independence, freedom, contentment. So many words people use. Ultimately, what is it? So when we see things the way they are, when we understand things the way they are, when we see the design of the existence the way it is, then we can see that my fulfillment, if I want continuous fulfillment, then it is the same as fulfillment for all or well-being of all. So, this would include right understanding within the self, being able to see the human being, the nature, the existence, the way it is, not how I assume it to be when I look at it through the gross eyes. So, seeing through the self, right understanding in the self, which is also referred to as truth in tradition. Having fulfillment in relationship, so having the feeling of love and compassion for all. And ensuring a little more than required physical facility, so that there can be prosperity. So this is possible through this we already discussed this, so we will not spend that much time on it. We will go further. Yes, please. Very good morning. Good morning. Uh, I think I have put a question on the chat. Okay, could you read it? Uh, how our UGC UV is going to support us? How is what going to support? Uh, with respect to the uh, in, individual faculties goals, UGCs, this HUV, HUV, whatever we are uh, undergoing from last three months, how it is mm -hmm. going to support us in achieving our goals? Yeah, so if we look, we should be asking the question, what is my role in this, rather than how it is going to support us. See, it works both ways. Yeah, so, it has to work on both the ways. Yeah, totally exactly. right. So yes. I can work on my understanding. And when I understand things the way they are, then I also see that I am related to all. So just as I require understanding, everybody else does too. So with that, I also see what is my participation in this, isn't it? Which is what is happening. Now, if yes. you see in the UHV also, so yeah. many volunteers are working. They are not getting any monetary gain from this. No, huh? not at all. We are not getting the monetary because that I have been the panel, panel, panel members also in number of the FDPs. We are not yes. getting a monetary benefit. Yes. The support that you can get from UGC and from AICT and all is the system. So they can give you a supportive system. Okay. For instance, like AICT is ready and willing to pay for the Zoom license and all of those things. Uh, yes. Uh. They can provide a forum, will, you know, they can give that support in terms of system, policy, whatever. Yes. As you go forward, ultimately it has to be both. It has to be my participation plus some help from the society. But from uh, the society, we are getting it. We are getting enriched with that. Yes. Huh, yeah. From the societal system, you can get help when there is more awareness about the need, more awareness about their uh, you know, support being required for this work which is essential. So as so it works both ways. So when we are doing the workshops, we are helping, you know, 
spread that message and as the message goes to more and more it is also you can see the support is also coming uh, we are uh, you are totally ha uh, you are totally right in this connection but at presently we are seeing a lot of induction programs are going up for the engineering as well as a number of the other courses all across india and uh, so whether ugc can uh, let these institutions to impart huv in their induction programs can ugc can make a mandatory in this regard this yes, is what this i will will happen do. slowly it's happening you will see that you know it started with aicte ha huh, yeah now to some extent ugc mm. is involved ncert is interested so now yes. it's spreading to schools it is yeah, being considered Almost, for uh, other in most of the schools in mp we have covered yes exactly yes. so huh. it takes some time to go no step by step so if we keep increasing our uh, meaning say as more and more volunteers are getting involved and working on it the faster we can achieve this goal isn't it okay okay i got your point but uh, what my humble request was been there if some uh, planning can be done from the ugc end it will be more fruitful because literally it has all in progress actually system. talks keep happening we may not be aware of them but um, all that is uh, in view and it is being uh, followed up with oh, them thank you ma'am thank you thank you thank you thank you so is we can go forward um no this one yeah so if you see human goal at the level of the individual in the self right understanding right feeling right thought and if you see everything related to the self so the body so you want to have health in the body only if the there is health in the body can it be or rightfully used as a tool for the purpose of the self then you know seeing how much of physical facility is required and when we have that physical facility to rightly utilize it preserve it and not just physical facility if you see the body also same thing in fact the mind also if you see what is the mind you know so we may be our mind may be getting influenced by the outside so we have all these thoughts about say maybe like what we discussed today if i have a wrong assumption then i may be looking for happiness outside because i think that's where it lies so i look for money i look for you know indulging in sensation and so many things so it starts from my you know um not having the right understanding having some assumption and then my thoughts are in accordance with that so i must also rightly utilize the mind you can say which is within me myself so all of this you know being able to see this ability to live in community with right behavior and work collaboratively again you know when we expand what we are where we are living in the family at least to begin with <coughs> we can start with in the family and then expand this to our neighbors to our community so that we trying to understand we can live it live it so that it reflects in our behavior and work when we participate together mindset of participation in the larger order that is very essential otherwise what happens is we keep waiting for something outside to become better not seeing our own participation so when i am able to see my relationship with the other 
then I also see my responsibility in that relationship and I try to fulfill that responsibility. So you can see this is what happens in the family, isn't it? Within the family, you know, parents may feel, you know, you can see they, they feel related to the child, so they take responsibility for the child. They recognize that responsibility and they fulfill that responsibility. There, we don't ask, you know, why should I do this for the child? Because we have accepted the relationship, we have accepted the responsibility in the relationship. Now, if we could see on a broader scale that I am related not just to this small family, but I am related to all. Now, the picture becomes, the, the view becomes broader. Now, I can see that if I am related to all, then, you know, at least the people that I am in contact with, with whom I am interacting, I can take responsibility in the relationship and fulfill that responsibility in a rightful manner. So, we can think about this. Does our unhappiness or complaints have to do with lack of competence in these areas? So, somewhere we may not be ready you know, with the right understanding, having the right mindset for these to happen. And therefore, we may be complaining. Then if the absence of this competence is making us unhappy, this is our need. So that's why we can see that, you know, our need is to become, to be able to see this relationship, to be able to see the participation to be able to improve our competence in all these areas. Next slide. If you look, this was at the level of individual. As an individual, my participation, participation in the larger order. If you look at the level of the family, to be able to see the relationship in the family, so like father, mother, son, daughter, brother, sister, In all the relationships, not just seeing or recognizing the relationship, but living it, fulfilling it, ensuring it from my side, having the right feeling from my side. And if the other has, you know, a, a, a behavior different from this, then to be able to see from the other's perspective, to be able to see that there must be some reason why the person is behaving that way. Perhaps the other person is himself or herself suffering this. So then my perspective changes from why is he behaving like this to what I can do to help this person. What can I do to make him be or her be at ease. So ensuring and fulfilling the feelings from my side in the relationship, within the family. And a mindset and competence for service as and when required. So if you, you, know, you may have elderly people in the house. You can see that the children, you know, as a tradition, children are sort of uh, taught to um, do seva or to s give service to the elderly grandparents. So help them with their needs. Perhaps, you know, press their legs um, before they go to sleep. Help them with whatever they need, like, you know, the food or the, the water from time to time and so on. There can be many things like that. So all of that you know, having that mindset for it, helping the children to have that mindset and to develop their competence also for this. Then in the family, recognizing the need for physical facility and how to go about producing it. 
and then rightly utilizing it so that there is prosperity in the family one other goal of the human uh, of the family is the ability to look after the next generation so for the children taking care of the body and giving guidance to them to help them so that we can see that they also require understanding and so helping them in that area giving guidance then the role of the family in the society accepting those responsibilities that the family is expected to fulfill in the society with the collaboration of the family so all the family members can get together and do something constructive with the society for instance say there is um uh in the society there is some um say the roads are dirty or there is some you know problem with the um say the sewage is not being um collected properly maybe there is some problem with the pipeline something is there then um how the whole family can help in this process how every family can take part in this so you have you know um like these days now cctv cameras are there on streets to supposedly to ward off thefts but then you can also have like a neighborhood crime watch system where the neighborhoods participate in that the families participate in helping to keep watch if one neighbor is not there keeping ultimately these are just um, you can say um, small solutions piecing you know like patchwork ultimately you need fearlessness in the society so that these kind of problems don't arise but right now immediately for solving such problem we can see whatever is at the level of society that is a problem if i can see a need in the society i i can also see as a family i am part of this society then i can see the relationship i can see i can take ownership i can take responsibility as a family to help in the process um and preservation of family traditions from generation to generation meaningful family and societal achievements for example if you see our tradition of ayurveda it has been continuing from thousands of years and from generation after generation it is being the tradition is being carried down you know from one generation to the next within the family so preserving these these systems of knowledge which are um of lot of significance lot of use for everybody so that they don't die out next slide at the level of society if you see the human goals then seeing that all those who are coming in contact with me not just my immediate family but everybody that i interact with if i am able to see my relationship with them my relatives my friends my neighbors my community people anybody even if they may be strangers at least the bare minimum should be the feeling of trust so that they can be fearlessness trust on intention this is why we say trust is for all only then can we have this fearlessness in the society which is what the goal of the at the level of society 
and then taking part in those responsibilities that are required for the societal system to work smoothly and effectively seeing the responsibility so you can see that you know these workshops that are being conducted all this that is being done we're trying to see our responsibility and working with that of course with the help of societal systems but for those systems to be able to work smoothly efficiently the system itself can only do so much ultimately we have to see our participation and join in as part of being part of the society and seeing our responsibility and development of a conducive social environment so that the family can feel reassured be able to participate so if there is a society where there is fear there is um worry about crime there is anxiety about not having enough then the family is not reassured family is not able to participate and the family gets enclosed within so each family becomes living like a separate unit which is without any connection with this society but it need not be that way the family you know if the societal system we can create such a system or have such a system where the family also can feel reassured and like we were just talking this will happen both ways as the family we see our responsibility we participate and whatever societal system we can take the help of we take the help of that so the family is living in a self organized manner and the society is also taken care of development of a humanistic constitution developing a humanistic approach which is a holistic approach seeing the participation of every unit as significant as important seeing the role of every unit and also my role with that and relationship of mutual fulfillment between all so not just within some boundary but for all so right now i may associate myself as being an indian but if i can look beyond this i can see the same need the same requirement the same goal for everybody even outside india i can see that understanding is required for each and every human being and so then i can expand my consideration of family to beyond my family beyond my society beyond my country in fact including all the countries so you know working for mutual fulfillment for all seeing the relationship with all and so that we can go to a world family next slide and if we look at the goal at the level of nature ensuring mutual enrichment with every unit in nature at every level so how would you say mutual enrichment making sure that like we were saying you know looking for the enrichment of the nature being you know, able to um take care of not just my prosperity but prosperity of nature so making sure that we use cyclic and mutually enriching production processes which means we one is you know everything that is there is being used rightly utilized and we are not using you know something like chemicals or pesticides those kind of things which may seem to give a bigger yield immediately but in the long run it is destroying the nature it is destroying the soil it is creating a problem within the soil of um uh, you know like uh, for instance for us also to be able to have this 
whatever the nature is providing the fruit the vegetables if it is laced with all this pesticide then it is going to harm the body also so to be able to see that my role with nature is to enrich the nature so that i can be prosperous and there can be prosperity in nature also so this is about the goals a little bit of detail about the goals the four goals at the level of individual family society and nature now let us look next slide let us look at one more formulation of the human goal one that is uh, as a society which is a collective human goal that can be one more formulation for a human goal so this is uh, what we see in our tradition also you can go to the next slide yeah so here you see wealth which is right understanding of natural laws and liberation you may be more familiar with the hindi terms of this instead of wealth we will say earth instead of fulfillment of wishes we will say calm right understanding of the natural laws dharm liberation moksha so this can be one more formulation of putting forward the human goal now how where to make the effort first where to work with first so the right order in which this effort can be made first and foremost to be able to have the right understanding within so working for the right understanding of the natural laws what are the natural laws like for instance for example being able to see that our natural acceptance or what is the design of the coexistence is one of relationship of harmony and of coexistence being able to see that we are in harmony when we are in line with these feelings when we are not in line with these we are in disharmony we are unhappy this could be one example of one of the laws so understanding things as they are seeing you know the design of the existence so ensuring right understanding within ourselves ensuring rightfully earned wealth we talked about what is rightfully earned wealth but we'll talk a little more detail in a little bit fulfillment of wishes or desires now if i have these desires based on right understanding then i will be able to see what are the needs of the body what is required for that i'll be able to see that my happiness is not dependent on the outside my happiness comes from within so my desires will also become in line with this understanding so rather than looking outside for happiness i will start being able to see my happiness in relationship my happiness in participation my happiness in being in harmony within and therefore all my desires will be now in line with that and then the effort for liberation is ultimately this that being able to see all this being able to live with this so that there is no dependence dependence seeing my interconnectedness but at the same time not depending on the outside for my happiness next slide yeah so if you look at wealth there is physical facility if you look at the natural resources whatever is available in nature when we put our thought to it of how to go about using it how to go about um working with it with the nature 
and we use the body for actually doing the work then we can lead to we can have production of physical facility so that is one example of rightfully earned wealth in accordance with the right understanding of natural laws we can also have in terms of you know when we are where we are not producing say so providing some service and acquiring wealth rightfully for that so you can see like for all the careers that we can see providing the service and getting a rightfully earned wage for that that is a rightfully acquired wealth and of course when we are producing it should be in line with the physical laws so when we produce one is we get the physical facility so we can have the fulfillment of the physical need but we can also see that when we have abundance when we have enough then we can help others also share this with others so in the nature you find you grow one papaya seed and you get abundance you get a tree full of fruit and each of these fruits has more seeds so how it grows from one to many to multiple similarly if i can see that you know if i work with nature then this abundance is there and with this abundance i can feel prosperous and i can help with the prosperity of others also next slide when we talk of fulfillment of wishes or desires so desires along with understanding of the natural laws understanding the wealth the identification of the need so like we were just talking seeing this um you know having our desires set right by seeing even if we don't have the right understanding or completeness of right understanding being able to see with our natural acceptance and bringing our desires in line with that the desires of oneself of the society of the family of all humanity of the entire social order keeping in mind that bigger goal of fearlessness trust in the society so i can you know try to fulfill my desire but when i have the understanding i don't lose track of these four goals so understanding in myself prosperity in the family fearlessness at the level of society so if i am taking more than my share i am contributing to fear lack of trust in the society which will create a problem so if i am able to see this then i will work towards my fulfillment of wishes keeping in view the larger goal of the society as a whole next slide living with understanding of the natural laws so laws of living in relationship and order and laws related to order in society and entire nature these natural laws or what we call existential laws is understanding that the entire existence is designed in such a manner that there is relationship between all the units there is harmony between all the units in all of this and living in accordance with that so these laws they are existential in nature these are not man made laws this is how it is 
what we call the truth or being able to see the reality. If we see the reality, we find this is how it is. And these laws are governing the entire existence. So either we can be part of it and live according to it, or we will find that we are bound to become unhappy and we will not be able to live with fulfillment for ourselves nor will be able to help others live with fulfillment. So, essentially laws, again, what I was just mentioning, that relationship, the harmony, being able to see that harmony within is what is my happiness, being able to experience that, being able to see that this harmony within is there when I have feelings in line with the pattern of existence, which is relationship, harmony and coexistence and so on. Next slide. When it comes to liberation or moksha, to be able to see everything clearly the way it is. So while we are working for the goals, we may not have been able to see everything, but we are also working for being able to see all this directly so that it can be ensured completely within us, so that there can be continuity of the happiness. Right now, we may see happiness levels increasing as we understand a little bit, a little more, a little more, as many of you have shared also. But ultimately, we want to be able to see the entire existence very clearly, to see it as it is, without misunderstandings, without assumptions, confusions, doubts, being very sure that this is how it is. That is only possible, or the, what we call knowing or right understanding, when we can see it that. I don't have these bondages, then I can live with transparency, with an understanding of all these laws. Yes. Next slide. Okay. I think what we can um, what we can see out of this is that ultimately that goal has to start from the individual. So we can see that when we are working for ourselves, within ourselves, we can see that our own level of harmony may be increasing, like some of you shared. And when we do the exercises, exercise one and two, that is where the focus is, seeing things directly within ourselves. When we read something or somebody else says something, then it is hearsay, then it, it is nice at the level of thought we are able to uh, sort of reflect on it. But beyond the thought, if, I, if somebody says something today and I assume it to be true and I have some thoughts about it and I think, okay, I have understood everything. But tomorrow somebody else comes and says something which is contradictory. Now I start thinking about that. Now I am confused. Whether that was right or this is right. What is right, I don't know. There begins the confusion, there begins the misunderstanding. So ultimately we have to try to see things directly for ourselves within ourselves to be able to achieve these goals. Yes, there are no hands raised, but if there's any question, we can take it up. Lot of things to assimilate, lot of things to reflect on.
if you see this second part of this um the first part we already reflected on the second part what do you see as your goal at the collective level and is it taking care of all dimensions of our living so of course we have to work on ourselves but while working on ourselves we can also see our role in the family we can also try to see our role at the level of society because ultimately we as individuals as families make up the society and how we are taking care of all this are we is it there at least in our thoughts then only we'll try to work for it didi namaste didi didi can we go back to the previous slide didi Yes, right. Ah, uh, ji, Didi. Didi, when we start with that UHV, we said that physical facility is of the third priority. Uh mm huh. -hmm. And my doubt is, Didi, why we are bringing that is living with understanding of natural laws plus wealth. Ah, uh, why we are bringing wealth here, Didi? Because uh, many sages, many masters, they don't have wealth at all. So there, I am getting confused, Didi. Yeah. So we are. bringing this other formulation one formulation is what we have been saying in uhv you know um right understanding at the level of the individual then the family prosperity in the family fearlessness in the society and living in coexistence with nature these four mm -hmm. goals we identified through uhv isn't it mm -hmm. in tradition there is one more formulation that you may be familiar with no arth kaam dharm moksh you have you heard of that formulation no to be sorry to be i have not heard of it okay so this is a, a common formulation in tradition mm. and here when we talk of wealth again we are talking of see if i understand how things are if i mm. understand that i can fulfill my wishes but if i am creating lot of disparity what's going to happen there is going to be fear there is going to be mistrust in society mm. so taking care of all that this living with understanding of natural laws living with um you know acquiring well that is rightfully mine but at the same time if i don't identify how much is mine or what i need it for then there is confusion then i hoard then i accumulate right now when we are talking wealth here we are thinking accumulation but we are seeing rightfully acquired wealth you do need some physical facility isn't it as long yeah. as the body is there you do need physical facility so not that it is prime we are still saying that understanding is prime mm mm with that understanding being able to see my relationships and being able to see that physical facility is also required let's not negate that mm mm physical facility is required but then if i have the right understanding as my base then i can understand how much is actually required isn't it then i can work for it but we can discuss it maybe outside or tomorrow mm -hmm. um, right now we are out of time and okay, you can okay. reflect on it and we can discuss it again sure sure thank you thank you so much thank you.